Hey everybody, Linda Rodriguez from PrepareBeforeDisaster.com. Uh, today I want, what I want to share with you is about tsunamis and it's going to be a multi-series. Um, it's going to be in more than one video because uh, there's a you know a little bit more to cover than um, what I think I can do through one video. And so uh, what I'm going to be sharing in this series is, um, series could be two videos, we'll see. Um, yeah, I want to share with you what a tsunami actually is, and then I want to share with you two ways uh, to determine that a tsunami is coming, and then when to evacuate, and how to survive a tsunami. And so the first thing that I want to um, share with you is, you know, what is a tsunami? A tsunami is a series of waves and surges that's most likely been caused by an earthquake beneath the ocean floor. And um, usually what you're going to see with a tsunami is if you're looking at the ocean and, you know, there's tides, high tide, low tide, but you'll notice that all of a sudden the ocean starts to recede and recede and recede and expose the ocean floor. And eventually what happens is that it, it recedes and it builds and, and then it comes back and it, it goes forward in this big surge and that's what's called the tsunami. <coughs> and so if you're near... Um, any place uh, such as uh, beaches, harbors, bays, tidal flats, uh, river mouths, those are all dangerous places to be should there be a tsunami on its way. And um, tsunamis usually will not travel more than one mile inland. But having said that, if I live 1.2 miles inland, I'm still going to higher ground because I don't want to take the chance that this one tsunami ends up making it more than a mile. So I'm still going more inland and I'm still going to higher ground. And that is my recommendation for you. If you live two, three, four miles, no, you don't have to worry about that. But if you're in that mile, maybe mile and a half, something like that, you know, less than two miles, you may want to err on the safe side and head to higher ground anyway. And then of course you're gonna stay there until um, the authorities or emergency personnel tell you that it's safe to come back because once you have the, uh, a tsunami, you, it can last for eight hours or longer, and your first wave is not necessarily the highest and the largest. So you don't want to have one wave and then say, oh, okay, it's great, it's ready to go, you know, I can go back, and then you go back, and now you have, you know, the problem that you tried to avoid in the first place. So once you're out of a tsunami zone, stay out of the tsunami zone until authorities tell you that it's okay to go back in. Um, Tsunamis cannot be surfed, so please do not try to surf a tsunami. There is no face for your um, your surfboard to dig into, uh, as there would be with a wave. This is just like a, 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 a surge of you know high water, as, as though high tide is coming in, but really, really quickly, uh, and with a lot of force. And so, uh, a lot of times there's there's uh, a lot of debris in there as well, so that's a safety issue uh, alone, but. You know, you can't surf it, so please don't try to. Just maybe grab your surfboard and head to higher ground and inland like everybody else is. Um, what I want to also um, share with you is the natural warnings of a tsunami. The natural warnings is if you're standing, let's say you're on the, the beach, and the, ocean, the um, floor, try this again, the beach, the ground, starts to shake um, very strongly that is a sign that a tsunami could be coming because that probably means that there's been an earthquake under the ocean floor or very close to it that could cause a tsunami. Um, the other thing is a loud roar, an ocean roar. An, again, another natural sign that a tsunami uh, could be on, or probably is on its way within a few minutes. And then again, if you see that water that's receding back, that's definitely a sign that a tsunami is going to be happening within a few minutes. So. Um, these are natural signs and, it, you know, as I said, it's going to be within minutes and so you want to head to higher ground and inland immediately. You want to, as I said before, stay in that safe zone until emergency personnel tell you that it's safe to leave. Tsunamis can last up to, as I said again, more than eight hours. So, you know, you could be there for a while and that's why this the second portion of this video is telling you uh, sharing with you about what kinds of things you need to have in a grab-and-go bag in the event that you need to leave or evacuate uh, your home because you might be wherever it is that 
you know, you're going to for safe ground, you might be there for, you know, half a day. Um, you don't know, and so you want to be prepared and have what you need. And then you want to stay away from coastal areas and, um, you know, beaches, rivers, the, all the types of things that I mentioned, harbors, bays, um, because all of those areas can be affected by a tsunami. So you don't want to be near any of those. Don't want to be in the low-lying areas. Now, the second warning would be an official warning. You know, warnings can be issued by radio, by television, uh, by telephone, by text message, door-to-door -door emergency um, personnel, uh, weather radios, uh, a number of different things, outdoor sirens as well. If you're in a tsunami area, chances are they have tsunami s uh, sirens that you'll hear go off. So if you're out on the beach or something like that, you know, you would hear them. Um, move away from the beach and the coastal area and um, seek more information uh, from the radio or the TV to find out what's happening as far as the tsunami or eminent impending tsunami. Um, follow the directions of emergency personnel and if they ask you um, to evacuate low-lying areas, which they probably will if you've heard or seen any of, of these um, types of warnings, they will ask you to evacuate low-lying areas. Please just do as they ask you to do. They're trying to help you. They're trying to keep you safe. So get yourself inland to higher ground. Heed the evacuation warning. Um, only use the phone in a life-threatening emergency, and that really goes for any disaster. Leave the airways open for the people that are emergency responders that may need to try and use the airways. That includes cell phones. So um, again, if it's, if it's a life-threatening emergency, go ahead, use the phone. But if it's not, just get your grab-and-go bag and just, you know, get to higher ground. Um, be sure uh, that um, you respond to uh, either one of these warnings is equally as important as the other, whether it's a natural warning or whether it's an official warning. And um, when should you evacuate? Well, um, I guess the question would be, do you, do you evacuate automatically? Um, and the question would be, no, don't automatically evacuate uh, unless, you know, if you hear the sirens or something like that. Like I said, you know, what's recommended um, is to check, you know, radio, TV, that type of thing, find out more information. But again, if you're standing on the ocean, on the ocean, if you're standing on the beach and you get those natural signs and you're seeing the water recede, just go. Don't say, oh, well, I have to go check a radio or a TV. No. I'm saying if you hear on the radio that, like I live in Southern California, and I heard on the radio that um, Japan had had that earthquake. And in part of where I live, where I actually, I actually was going that day, was in Santa Barbara. And they said that there was an impending tsunami warning in Santa Barbara. Well, I know that on my way to Santa Barbara, I've got, you know, I'm on the road and I've got the ocean here and I've got cliffs here. I'm not going anywhere. Can't go anywhere by foot, can't go anywhere by car. I'm going to be stuck. So guess what I did? I called up, I canceled my appointment. I'm not going to put myself in a situation when, when everything around me is telling me that they are expecting, expecting a tsunami to hit at the time that I'm supposed to be in that area. So that's what I mean by don't immediately evacuate. It all depends on the situation. It all depends on the signs that you're seeing. But don't panic and run, you know, um, because they say that a tsunami might be coming by, you know, 2 o'clock this afternoon and it's 10 o'clock in the morning. Just keep your eyes and ears open. Find out what's going on. If the situation escalates, then by all means get your things and, and take yourself out of, uh, out of the area if you're in one of those tsunami hazard zones. Um, just want to check here real quick because I think I just kind of went through all of those things real fast. Um, if you know that you live, work, or play in a tsunami zone and there's an earthquake, I know there's a lot of things going on and I know it's crazy, but if you live in that zone, try to remember that once you feel the shaking, start to count. And if you feel that shaking for more than 20 seconds, and as I said, you live in a zone that's near the ocean or water, assume that there is going to be a tsunami. Get your stuff and go. Um, okay. Um, 
if you're at the beach or um, harbor um, and you feel an earthquake, as I said earlier uh, in the video, if you're there on the coastline anywhere and you feel an earthquake, you should just assume that a tsunami could follow and take yourself out and go in a safe manner. Um, again, you don't have to panic and, you know, um, just in a safe way, take yourself from where you are and head towards higher ground and, um, but do it immediately and do it by foot. Do not get in the car and try and go because what's going to happen is you're just going to have people trying to evacuate and you're going to have a traffic jam and you're going to be sitting there in a car in low lying areas trying to get out. Know that if you're in a tsunami zone, you're going to have to plan how to get out of there on foot. So have, and that, that'll be in a couple of, uh, in my other video, have a couple of evacuation routes. Have one by car because depending on where you are, you may be able to use the car. But if you're on the beach and you know that you've got to go, you know, three quarters of a mile to, to get to higher ground, you're probably not going to be able to do it by car. And you're actually going to be able to do it faster on foot. So... You know, what they tell you to do is do it on foot. The roads may be closed. The bridges may be out. Um, when you do that, you know, or if you're in the car, or if you're on foot, be careful for, um, for downed power lines. Um, if uh, evacuation is not possible and you are stuck where you are, then you need to look for um, a sturdy building and you need to head for the third floor or higher. And... Um, that's where you'd be if you were in a building. If you can't make it to a building, then try and climb a tree. Um, neither one of those are my first choice of where I want you to be or what I want you to do in a tsunami, but that's gonna be your last ditch effort. If you can't leave and you can't evacuate, then you do the best you can with what you have, and that's getting to us in a sturdy building, third floor or higher, or climb a tree and not a tree that you know is one little tree that you know you can see bends like you want to climb a strong tree that can possibly hold you or even if it gets ripped away you know you can maybe hang on to it and, and somehow get to safety some other way um, if you hear that a tsunami war tsunami I knew I was gonna mess that up throughout this if you hear that a tsunami warning has been issued and you do not feel an earthquake, as I said before, um, don't automatically evacuate. Just check your radio, check your TV stations or some other reliable source and follow their directions. And if you're not in a tsunami zone, then again, you don't need to worry. You don't have to do anything except maybe assume that you're, you know, you might be getting some, some visitors to come and um, try and, you know, stay there whether it's friends or relatives, if they have come from the uh, tsunami zone. But other than that, um, that's basically what you're going to want to do as far as um, knowing what a tsunami is and knowing the two signs, uh, warning signs of a tsunami. Uh, as I said, if you go on to my other, um, if you go on to my next video, you're going to find in my next video uh, about how, how to, uh, when to evacuate and then how to survive a tsunami. So um, hopefully you will choose to come back and, and finish, you know, finding out about tsunamis. Um, you can find all of this information in this video on my website, which is preparebeforedisaster.com. So, um, you know, if you, if you can't check this out, then please go on to the website, check out the second video. And uh, anything, as I said, that has been on here, you don't need to worry about writing it down. You can get that off of the website. And until then... Um, be safe and be prepared. Bye-bye.